Judges, lawyers, and law enforcement officers, they're all part of a society. Within that society, they've created their own language that's deceptively similar to English. They have these little things called statutes, acts, and regulations that seem like laws, but they really only apply to those within their society. So that basically means all the traffic violations, minimum age requirements, and everything except for damage to another person or their property doesn't really apply to the natural person. Laws only apply to those within the law society. The game being played is an illusion. You can simply choose to open your eyes and reclaim the freedom that you were born with, bound by nothing but the limits of your imagination. These are just a few examples of assuring that your rights are being protected. By far, the most important line of defense against this deception is to be aware of the perversion of language and be absolutely aware of how you form your beliefs and concepts. In all forms of the perversion of language, there is a mirror reflection of this in the microcosm of the psyche. And the problem I see with humanity today is we don't truly know ourselves anymore. We have the 9 to 5 job, we have the house, the children, the bills, the television, the hobbies, and the errands that we run every single day, and we eventually begin to believe that this is who we are. You know, but who are we beneath the job title, beneath the status of mother or father, theist or atheist, Republican or Democrat, black or white, man or woman, who are we? Who are we deep down inside? We don't know because every time we hear an answer that we don't want to accept about ourselves, we deny it. We'll pass it off and project it onto somebody else and judge them for it. This is repression. And we see what repression is do to us on an individual level, but what about on a collective level of humanity? What happens when the whole world refuses to see what they truly are on the inside? Carl Jung discovered that there is a collective unconscious connected to all humans, meaning that the whole of humanity shares a single mind with one another. This is evident in the world through accounts of shared mythology and symbols, the study of morphic fields, and with the science of kinesiology. This collectivity is a global example of the unconscious mind of the human body in which trillions of cells share a similar signal. This parasite called our false ego requires a continuous flow of sustenance to survive. Food, fuel, and any other form of sustenance is energy. Human consciousness is an electromagnetic field of energy. When this potential energy is utilized, it then releases kinetic energy, which is used to perpetuate the false ego. This scenario occurs in the smallest parasitic organisms, all the way to a collective organism called humanity. A parasite will release chemicals that cause the host to crave the sustenance that the parasite needs to survive. As long as the host is unaware, it will keep feeding the parasite and starving itself. In a similar way, Wilhelm Reich stated that whole societies suffer from a psychosis caused by starving our organic biological impulses. He states that sexual suppression supports the power of the church which has sunk very deep roots into the exploited masses by means of sexual anxiety and guilt. It engenders timidity towards authority and binds children to their parents. This results in adult subservience to state authority and to capitalistic exploitation. It paralyzes the intellectual critical powers of the oppressed masses because it consumes the greater part of biological energy. Finally, 
it paralyzes the resolute development of creative forces and renders impossible the achievement of all aspirations for human freedom. In this way, the prevailing economic system, in which single individuals can easily rule entire masses, becomes rooted in the psychic structures of the oppressed themselves. What Reich was showing in this powerful quote is that on a collective level, the suppression of a natural function, whether biological, spiritual, or emotional, will result in an abnormal reaction, a psychic disease. This illness or disease is reflected into the masses through a collective unconscious and acts as an epidemic. Humanity is plagued with an incapacity for freedom, meaning that people en masse lack the ability to govern themselves on a psychic level and this manifests in the macrocosm as government and organized religious powers, thus opening the throne, our national and individual throne, to anyone and anything. Enter the infamous rulers of the earth, the patriarchs of civilization, political, social, economic, and spiritual dictatorship, psychic tyranny, this simple illness within our psyche, this lack of responsibility and neglect of basic human freedom has made way for every tyrant that has ever held rule over people on this planet. But these oppressive tyrants that are demonized by the masses are no different than us. In fact, they are one with us. In the book The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, he poetically states, I say, as the holy and the righteous cannot rise beyond the highest which is in each of you, so the wicked and the weak cannot fall lower than the lowest which is in you also. Every one of us has the capability to commit the most horrifying sin or show the most beautiful compassion to our fellow man. This is the very definition of an illness within the psyche and soul of man. Think of any position of power that you believe to be above you. Royal families, government leaders, the United Nations, financial organizations, corporate monopolies and media juggernauts. These are all facets of our false ego. They are the physical advent of our own sickness. They require our conscious participation, our conscious energy to survive. Because without our cooperation, without supplying them with the sustenance of complicity, they starve. Their very nature depends on our desire to be ruled. And a typical symptom of the illness among humanity today is our continuous denial of our illness. Repression. We consistently repress those qualities we choose not to accept about ourselves. This is why it is so difficult to see the false ego and its multiple manifestations for what they truly are. This is the very nature of the false ego. It acts as a red herring to distract us from the freedom we truly have. For this psychic parasite to survive, it must supply us with a chemical that will cause us to remain dependent upon it. In this case, the sustenance is our conscious energy. And in order for us to feed it to the parasite, the chemical of fear causes humanity to crave protection and defense. The functions of the body to survive can be broken down to two basic functions for any organism to survive. You have to be able to grow, maintain yourself, take care of your biology, but you also must be able to protect yourself. 
so that if you're just growing and you can't protect yourself, you'll become food for something else. So the uh, survival involves a balance between growth and protection. Through the history of human civilization and through a human evolution, we recognize that our nature is to be in a state of growth and that our protection is only supposed to be used to you know, help us out of that, that threatening moment. You can't be in growth and in protection at the same time. So the significance is, when we see a need of protection, the stress hormones in the body shut off the blood vessels in our viscera, our gut, which is the part of the body for growth. Well, the issue is, if you took the blood from the viscera and moved it out to the arms, then you left no blood in the viscera. That means no growth. But you're ready to fight. And when your fighting is finished, then the blood returns back to the viscera and you grow again. But in the world that we live in today, it's 24-7 fear.